This is CBN News Watch. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Ephraim Graham. Police in Toronto are trying to find out why a man drove his van down a sidewalk, plowing down pedestrians in a busy area of the city, killing at least 10 people and injuring 15 others. Our dear Heard is following this story. 25-year-old Alec Manashin was, according to his LinkedIn profile, a student at Seneca College in Toronto's North York area. Police say he used this rented van as a murder weapon on a Toronto sidewalk crowded with people strolling during their lunchtime Monday in what appeared to witnesses and police as a deliberate attack that lasted 26 minutes. Vehicle, personal injury, intersection of Young Street and French Avenue. It began just after 1.30 p.m. in one of Toronto's busiest areas. Manashin's van jumped a curb and began striking anyone he could find. It was just clear as day, uh, just an ordinary day walking and just saw the guy get hit by a van. That van traveled 16 blocks, mowing down pedestrians for nearly a mile and a half. Gruesome scene is really bad out there. I couldn't believe what I seen, man. It was like, oh man, everybody, all these people on the streets getting hit one by one, post office box getting crumbled up on people and one person got dragged on and their blood is all over. Everyone started running and screaming and he hit this one lady and she went flying. You could hear them and like dropping. Those who saw it unfold witnessed a horrifying scene. Victims and their belongings left bloodied and scattered. There was one lady who was in t uh, total distress and we saw the team go to work on her and pumping away and uh, they, they lost her. <laughs> Manashin was quickly arrested after a brief confrontation with officers a few blocks away. On the basis of all available information at the present time, there would appear to be no national security connection to this particular incident. ISIS has called on its followers to use vehicles to attack non-believers in Western nations. And vehicle attacks have occurred across Europe and even in the U.S. But officials so far do not believe this was terrorism. Classmates of Manashin who spoke with Canada's Globe and Mail described the suspect as socially awkward. A senior government official said the fact authorities had not turned over the investigation to the Royal Canadian Mounted Police is a big indication that this was not terrorism, but could have been simply the act of someone who wanted to kill. Dale Hurd, CBN News. Here now is a look at some of the other headlines we're following for you inside the CBN newsroom today. Former President George H.W. Bush is recovering after being hospitalized with an infection. Doctors admitted him to Houston Methodist Hospital Sunday shortly after his wife's funeral. An infection spread into the bloodstream of the 93-year-old. A spokesperson for the family says he is responding to treatment and appears to be recovering. Officers have arrested the man they say is behind the shooting at the Waffle House. A phone tip led the police to Travis Reinking. The 29-year-old was found with a backpack and a loaded semi-automatic handgun near his apartment. Hundreds of police and armed SWAT units searched for, for him for nearly 36 hours. The decorations are set and the guest list is ready. First Lady Melania Trump has put her stamp on her first state dinner. The dinner is in honor of French President Emmanuel Macron. More than 150 guests are expected to dine at the White House Tuesday night. And of course, you can find more in these stories throughout the day at CBNNews.com. In a surprising twist, the Senate Foreign Relations Committee approved President Trump's pick for Secretary of State Mike Pompeo to the Senate floor. Abigail Robertson brings us the story behind the selfless move one Democratic senator made in order to help his friend on the other side of the aisle. In 2017, the Senate easily approved Mike Pompeo's nomination as CIA director by vote of 66 to 32. Now that President Trump wants him as Secretary of State, this key role has faced historic partisan opposition. It began when each committee Democrat announced they would vote no on moving Pompeo forward, along with Republican Rand Paul. That would have sent the nomination to the full Senate with an unprecedented, unfavorable recommendation, with Paul voting no and GOP Senator Johnny Isakson absent attending a funeral. Then, two surprises happened. Paul changed his mind, and Senate Democrat Chris Coons helped his mourning friend by voting present instead of no. He called me and asked, 
uh, if it made the difference in moving ahead today, rather than making him come in at 11 o'clock at night, would I vote present? I was happy to do that for a friend. Coons, who co-chairs the National Prayer Breakfast, told reporters of Isaacson's difficult day, giving the eulogy at his best friend's funeral, and didn't want to make his day any harder. Several of my Democratic colleagues said that was the right thing to do. Coons recalled when his father died, a Republican senator offered to do the same for him. That meant a great deal to me. Um, so every now and then we should find our way towards each other in ways like this, in moments like this. The gesture moved committee chairman Bob Corker to tears. Coons is one of those members that's uh, here to make a difference. And, uh, I think it showed that uh, senators at the right time can do outstanding things. Senate leadership hopes to see Pompeo confirmed by the end of the week before their next recess. Reporting from Capitol Hill, Abigail Robertson, CBN News. Michigan State University is back in the spotlight with another sexual abuse scandal. The school has reportedly kept ties to a volleyball coach accused of sexually abusing and raping six underage girls that he trained back in the 1980s. Advocates for the accuser reveals MSU has been under, under pressure for at least a year to sever his relationship with Rick Butler, but they have yet to do so. Questions about ties to Butler add to the scrutiny of MSU that began with the gymnastics doctor, Larry Nasser, who was charged for abusing gymnasts for more than 20 years while he had an, while he had an office on the campus. Still ahead here on CBN Newswatch, anti-Semitism is on the rise in Europe. We're going to take a look at why. A ribbon-cutting ceremony is set to take place next month at the new American embassy in Jerusalem. The Times of Israel reports that Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin will lead a 250-strong delegation from the United States, including some 40 lawmakers, including President Donald Trump's senior advisor and son-in-law Jared Kushner. The president's daughter, Ivanka Trump, Republican Senators Ted Cruz and Lindsey Graham, White House Middle East envoy Jason Greenblatt, as well as the heads of Jewish and pro-Israel Christian organizations. The White House House has yet to confirm that report. CBN News has warned you for a long time about the rise of anti-Semitism in Europe. But as more and more Muslims settle in Europe, the problem is getting worse. Adil Heard returns now with this report from Belgium. This phone video from Berlin showing a man wearing a Jewish cap being attacked in the street went viral last week, causing German Chancellor Angela Merkel to admit publicly that the large number of Arab refugees her government has brought into Germany have brought a new anti-Semitism with them. It turns out the man wearing the kippah or cap was not Jewish but decided to wear it to see what would happen. Jewish leaders have now called on all Germans to wear kippahs publicly Wednesday as a show of solidarity. In France, 300 national leaders, including former President Nicolas Sarkozy, have issued a manifesto denouncing a new anti-Semitism that is leading to what the manifesto called an ethnic purge of Jews from France. France was shocked last month after an 85-year-old Holocaust survivor was murdered in what French police call an anti-Semitic hate crime. She was stabbed 11 times before her body was set on fire. Even in Britain, apparent widespread anti-Semitism by members of the Labour Party has become a political scandal. The new anti-Semitism that has swept across Europe has come to Belgium as well. And it's the same story. Physical attacks and cursing of Jews in the street. In this security video posted on Twitter last week, a man is seen ripping the mezuzah or religious sign off the door of an Antwerp synagogue. This is so common now in some parts of Europe, we visited this synagogue in Brussels that decided to take its mezuzah down. Israel's president says anti-Semitism is again in full sight in Europe. There's concern in Hungary, there's concern in France, there is concern of a uh, new and very ugly wave of anti-Semitism sweeping uh, Western Europe. And I think that we will see more Jews coming to Israel. Alan Hoffman is head of the Jewish Agency, which helps Jews return to Israel. We hear of Jewish children um, being taunted in public schools. And so families say, if this is what the future is going to look like, I don't think that this is 
what I'd like to see for my children. In Poland, this Holocaust survivor says people still whisper that Hitler did a lot of bad things, but he also freed us from the Jews. But Jews in Europe today know what happened in the 1930s and seem determined to not make the same mistake again. Dale heard CBN News. Still ahead, reach out and touch someone's hand. Those are song lyrics indeed, but there are also benefits to reaching out and touch somebody. We'll explore that coming up. Welcome back. I want to turn now to health news. Researchers have discovered a vitamin E-like compound can lead to improved memory and brain function. Our Lori Johnson shows us the benefits of PQQ. Parsley, green peppers, kiwi, papaya, tofu, and green tea. They all contain small amounts of the vitamin-like compound known as pyroquinoline quinone, or PQQ for short. Scientists say it helps our cells carry out their basic functions. Based on the premise that small amounts of PQQ in food promote overall health, scientists discovered that even higher doses in supplement form led to even greater benefits. Dr. Michael Murray says PQQ can be especially helpful for people who are suffering from some typical symptoms of aging, a drop-off in their memories and thinking skills. There is sufficient evidence right now showing efficacy and safety for a number of different applications, particularly improving memory and mental functions. And of course, uh, this is a relatively new substance, so there's going to be a growing body of scientific research. PQQ acts on the mitochondria in cells. Those mitochondria are responsible for producing energy that helps fuel the brain. So if the mitochondria are not functioning up to par, that brain is going to be a little bit dim. So we want to turn that dimmer switch, which is largely related to the activity of the mitochondria, to full strength. And that's what PQQ is able to do. Murray says PQQ is 5,000 times more effective than vitamin C at fighting diseases caused by free radicals. People over 40 who took 20 milligrams of PQQ a day found that their minds worked better, and even more so when they combined it with 300 milligrams of the nutrient CoQ10. Lori Johnson, CBN News. That human touch is essential for babies to develop and to thrive, but more recent research shows it's just as vital for adults as it is for newborns. Our Caitlin Burke has more on the science behind the power of touch. Thursday night Bible study in Skagit County, Washington, sounds like your normal men's prayer meeting. The laying of hands isn't unusual but it took these men some time to be comfortable receiving God's love through touch. Chris Hoke met most of them as chaplain of the county jail. In the jail, no one, guys don't touch. And on the streets, they wouldn't. I think the only place they'd have it is just an over-sexualized sense of touch with, with girlfriends. Julio was one of those inmates. A lot of times there's guys that they're scared of being touched because they need to put up a front with that tough guy role. And when someone, just some stranger comes in and tells you he loves you and he gives you a hug, it's something you're not used to, it's, it's a feeling that you feel that somebody cares about you. It was surprising how much guys wanted a hug right when they came through that door. Just boom, they'd want a hug. And some guys would say, you know, sometimes I come just to get my fix. I saw how much there's a hunger there for it, if it's healthy. If you want to hold it. So why this hunger for touch? According to neuroscientists, our brains are programmed for touch. There is a whole array of compounds that play together in order to allow touch and social interactions to affect our brain. This is the hypothalamus right here. The hypothalamus area of the brain produces oxytocin, which is released upon positive touch. That compound can reduce fear and increase trust. For many of these men, positive touch played a huge role in their healing and growth. But then one day the jail instituted a no contact rule. Inmates were allowed only what they called a business handshake, and chaplains were told to reject anything else. 
How did that loss of touch start to affect the inmates? At first, I, it, to me, it seemed like the guys almost became more violent. It seemed to me, especially in those first few weeks, that more fights were breaking out as if they were swinging for some kind of contact. Dr. Oravich is not surprised at this reaction. The lack of touching causes all kinds of changes in brain development and brain organization. In the mid-1900s, Dr. Harry Harlow found this in experiments where he deprived monkeys of physical contact from birth. The results were heartbreaking. If you take a social creature and isolate it and look at a part of the brain called the hippocampal formation, psychosocial deprivation actually causes a physical injury to that particular part of the brain. Our brains were designed to be with other brains. Research shows the first sense developed in the womb is touch, as early as eight weeks, highlighting the need for proper touch from day one. At Centera Princess Anne Hospital in Virginia Beach, new mother Rebecca chose to participate in an increasingly popular practice called skin to skin. For skin to skin, immediately after birth, we try to have the baby go directly onto the mom's abdomen. Um, so the mom immediately gets to hold and feel her baby. 40 years of research shows this contact leads to many benefits for babies and their mothers. How did it feel when you first got to hold him skin to skin? Um, it was an indescribable feeling. Um, as soon as they put him skin to skin, that bond was there. That secure bond gives baby Bryce a foundation that can help him throughout life, from academics to sports. In sports, trust between teammates is critical. So if positive touch creates trust, how could that help a team's performance? To find the answer, scientists left the lab and headed to the basketball court. Researchers at the University of California at Berkeley studied basketball teams over a complete season. After determining 12 types of positive touch between teammates during gameplay, they detailed the occurrence and duration of each one. Their results showed the touchier players in teams actually performed better than their counterparts. At the Bible study, these former inmates, who could only rely on themselves in prison, now learn to count on others. Chaplain Chris Hope credits that to Jesus and how he's touched these men's lives. I think that's what God came to do, is to touch us. Jesus crossed such a span between us um, so that we could be one. And so I think the touch is just the beginning of that, of, of a love story. I feel like there's a intimacy with, with, with Jesus when two men are, are touching each other and praying for each other. It's, you can feel the energy when someone is putting their hands on you and praying for you. You can feel the power of Christ going through that person's hands and going into your body. Caitlin Burke, CBN News. No denying the power of touch. Stay with us. There's much more of CBN Newswatch coming up right after this. And welcome back to CBN Newswatch. It's time now for your Tuesday Tweetable. And this is a message we hope that will bless your day, but also a message that you will post, tag, tweet, and share with others. Consider this. Your life, talents, gifts, and finances are all seeds. And if that's the case, take a good long look at what you're doing with them and know this. An unplanted seed is untapped potential. Don't die with untapped potential. Die tapped out. In other words, use everything you've got to the glory of God and to uplift your fellow man. That is going to do it for this edition of CBN Newswatch. Remember, you can find more of our exclusive coverage of the issues you care most about always at CBNNews.com. And we would love to hear from you. You can let us know what you think about the stories you've seen here today by emailing newswatch at CBN.com. And of course, you can always reach out and touch us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Hope you'll join us again right here next time. Make this a terrific Tuesday. We'll see you right back here. Come tomorrow. Goodbye and God bless everybody.